Love 15. Just get the sense tonight that Maria's facing a better Leila Fernandez than she has in their two prior meetings. Just might leave that out there. Last 13 matches at the back end of 2023. Only loss coming to uh, Sinyakova. Semis of Nanchang. And all the matches at the Billie Jean King Cup. And why do you say she's playing a better player tonight than when she was making the final of the US Open in what was a stunning run? It was, and was actually favourite to win that final, wasn't she, on paper? because she was far more experienced than Emma Raducanu and, and far higher, higher ranked. I feel that she is physically stronger. I think that I, what I love about I think she's more confident. I think she's gone through the ups and downs post that US Open. What I love is that she's always trying to do something on that tennis court. You know, she never hits a ball without purpose. And I feel she has got a better understanding of her, her weaponry and her game, far more so than a couple of years ago. behind the baseline to try and hit such a big backhand there. Something about the way Fernandez hugs her baseline as well, that through the middle isn't a bad play against the Canadian. soft touch on the strings to another one with the soft touch on the microphone. Hello, Laura. Hello, guys. I just had nice to finish. give that volley a little round of applause. That was gorgeous. Do you agree with Sam? She's a better player now? Um, no. 
I'm fine with that, Laurie. You don't have to agree with me. I'm I cool. would say yes to all the other things you mentioned. She's physically stronger. She's more confident. But something, something in the stars aligned for her in those two weeks where I have still not yet to see her play at that level as consistently because she, you see flashes of it here and there. But um, over the course of a match, she's still dealing with these dips, which you would expect. Uh, but I have liked how she's played over the last, you know, two months or so. I saw some of the matches in Hong Kong where she won the title there, playing aggressive. Um, I just think this matchup is, is a tricky one for her because she's Maria playing a lot of open Sakaria stance forehands, which is where her grip kind of comes a, a little unstuck for me. Speaking of the grip, it, it, it's huge for her hand, isn't it? It's, that's something that we really noticed at that US Open when we can't get over. That, uh, she, she barely can wrap her hand yeah. around it. It's just absolutely extra it's extraordinary. And it does influence the, the way she plays. You know this, Mark, but uh, obviously remember the great Sue Barker, French Open champion back in 76, was a commentator out here for many years. Sue Barker also had an extraordinarily large grip. It was the first racket she was given. She can't play with anything else. And Sue's yep. actually just started playing tennis again, I hear, after about 20 years. She can't find a racket that will fit her. And I said I'd try and pinch one of Layla's for her. <laughs> did we see Garcia use that kick serve out wide on the ad side today and it was just shooting off the court it's really kind of hot and humid down here quite muggy so the ball's traveling just slightly faster than the previous few days Time coach to have a, a couple of weeks. Did Maria and Tom and got uh, Sergey Bruguera involved back home in uh, Athens at the to Toy Club, which I know you've been to, uh, Sam. Pretty nice place, isn't it? It's just out top of, this, of the range. It's out of this world. Well, five star, no, six star. No wonder Sergey was happy to come over. As well as working with, uh, you've worked with Maria, one of the loveliest players you could ever want to coach in terms of her personality and work rate. And uh, the first time I ever met Maria was at Nottingham on the grass. We'd never actually formally seen each other. We chatted on the telephone, went over there and uh, hooked up with her for the for the first practice, which ended up being four hours straight. That's the <laughs> longest said, time you ever you've ever said, trained. She said, "Is this normal?" <laughs> so I got a bit carried away. Thankfully, it's not normal. <laughs> Skill-based sport. The more time you're out there, the more skills you learn. When she's a bit anxious, 
and just a little bit nervous, she can press. And there have been a few too many unforced errors in this opening segment of the match from Zachary, and it's eight already. And it is an opportunity for Fernandez. But that's the forehand that I mean when she's forced into really loading on the outside leg and then the grip comes under pressure and it just looks like she's almost shaking as she's playing the shot. The wrist doesn't look stable. That's because she can hardly hold the racket because it's the grip's too big. It's just extraordinary how she was how they let her play with it all these years. and cons of having a larger grip on Lovely your tennis racket. Team. Laura? I'm, defer I'm deferring that to Laura. I can't think of many pros. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, cons, obviously, you've got less stability. Um, I think you've got more chance of the racket coming loose. And it's an, it's an extreme grip that she's got anyway. I don't know because I've never, I've Love never it. ever played with a big grip. I always went smaller, actually. I suppose also if when you have such a huge grip, very high, very tough high above the head on the forehand, as well, it gets well above shoulder high. That's not easy to control and get enough racket speed. I think Laura and I are in agreement. There's not too many pluses, but she's she's only 21 years of age. She's had a great career already. Average on those stats at break back straight away, but uh, looks as though she's going to improve that particular number three straight break points. Very early preparation from Maria on that forehand side, as you can see, lovely shoulder rotation. Oh. Having a bigger grip also, I do think it allows you to move the ball around like Fernandez does, but it, because it it stops you really sort of lagging nicely and getting good racket head acceleration on the ball. I think you are guiding it a lot more because of the bigger grip, and you see that from her. She's good at handling pace on that baseline. Perfectly. Just couldn't find the finishing touch. 30, 40. And Maria's just said over to her box that she thinks it's flying a little bit off her strings, whether she changes the tension, maybe takes a new frame. would be a very nice scramble to safety for Fernandez having just broken.
beautiful shot. Well, we there was a high tariff on that one, and that's uh, actually the advantage of actually not always not having too much of a full swing on that backhand side. She could get racket back and forward very quickly. What wonderful racket work! Great angle to see it from. Fourth break point. on the board in the second of the singles tonight here in Sydney. Team Back Canada, on serve, 2-1, Team Canada. Team Canada. job there of just trying to uh, get through to Maria to calm down. She was talking, if you weren't with us in the break, about how she was just touching the ball and it was flying long and she wasn't aiming for the baseline on some of those misses that we saw in her service game. Whether she can just get that back under control. College tennis, Tom, at Pepperdine. Probably the uh, head heaviest racket out there on the tour, I would say. Spent a lot of time in Barcelona uh, honing her craft, and that is how they tend to set up their rackets as well. And because of her physicality, she's able to control that racket head. But uh, a lot of weight in the head, and obviously once it gets going, not only is it a fast ball, but it's a very heavy ball that you have to return. Chicago, who customizes all the rackets for Wilson, and he does such an incredible job. Even when they change the paint, I know some players are super, what well, super superstitious basically, and they think they're convinced that it changes the whole dynamic and, and the weight. Thirteen fifteen. Well, Laura, they're right, because Todd Woodbridge is a fascinating person to speak to about rackets, and he said if you change from a gloss paint to a matte paint, it does change uh, how the racket feels in your hand. You can hear the 
clear by the, 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 the low tone that comes off the racket as she strikes the ball. That you would always suspect that it was heavy. Of course, you've worked with her, uh, Mark, so you would have a, more of an insight. But I'm, it's something that's so good to hear because I, I just feel on the women's tour, so many of the women use rackets that are way too headlight for them. And they wonder why the ball is flying on them all the time. It's actually something that Martina Navratilova has talked about for many years on tour. If you've ever picked up one of Martina's frames, you always need like two hands to be. It's like this most, it's unbelievably heavy, and she is a great believer in just the women having much more air in the racket head. You know, you don't have to swing as fast, you get a lot more out of it. Talking to a lot of the players, I think there's a concern that you know you change the distribution of the weight, and all of a sudden the balls are heavier, the courts are starting to get slower. This one is playing pretty medium fast, but then all it's I mean, it's really straining on the elbow, the wrist, the shoulder, and you really feel it in your arm as soon as you change the weight even a couple of grams. a new yes. frame but it is I mean she always was playing with the Wilson Ultra she's playing with the Wilson shift now so I mean there, there have been some changes there there's unquestionably going to feel a little bit different that's where Layla loves to hit the ball from just above waist height up on the baseline she's got the look down the line which she loves suspect Sakura is really going to have to apply herself tonight because Fernandez has become a, become a very good match player, very kind of smart, she always digging in there, never really lets games go away cheaply. very much in this match now. Big game coming up here for Leila Fernandez. It'll be interesting tonight just to see how much Layla can get forward. That is something that she spoke about after her match with Angelique Kerber that she has been working on so much in the off season and wants to bring it more into her game and her matches this year. Love that in. Starting to uh, unravel a little here for Fernandez as uh, we see the uh, stringer. And already those strings getting cut out of there. That'll be about a 10 minute job before it's hurried back to court. B 
15, 13. I think it was us talking about it in her last match, Sam, that I feel like Layla can get so much more out of her first serve. It's a bit of a disjointed motion at the moment, but she could accelerate way more into the shot. She's a really explosive mover. There's a lot more that could be improved on there, and, and she's barely scratching the surface. a great shot it's just the difference from down here on on the pop from both players you see maria's first serve really jumping off the court and layla kind of sits there gets into sakari's strike zone really especially as a lefty even a natural right-hander playing as a lefty she could get way more out of it Take some doing. Laura, I'm, I'm completely with you on the serve. It's a little out of sync, isn't it? All the Aussies have a saying, arms up together, arms down together. And she leads very much with that right arm before the left comes into play. That's tough to time. Remember, Ash Barty actually used to serve a little like that. And uh, over time, they, they got it in sync. Things that Tom was telling me that uh, Sergi was uh, trying to get through to Maria. It's not that Tom uh, isn't also saying it is to use your physicality. Don't check out a point because she's got such raw power and a heavy hit. Sometimes she gets caught between the two, not using her athleticism to stay in rallies and sometimes just making too many unfalls. That was a that was a nice point from her. to go so close to the line from so far back. She's got so much power. It was a point Mark Philippoussis was making uh, the other day when he was courtside. It's the forehand so big, the game's so big, doesn't need to go to, so close to the lines. Huge old couple of uh, very competitive games and a very competitive match right now between these two countries. 3-2, Fernandez. Well, there was a bit of a, uh, a moment in the uh, last change events when Tom Hill was doing a bit of coaching and he delayed us from getting out to one of the most iconic spots here in Sydney. Off to Bondi Beach, it's only a kilometre wide, although Wally Masur will tell you just over the road there in Manly is even better competition and better surf. But this is where most of us know to come when we come to Sydney. A very special place and a great spot for a bit of surfing. You get on the board, Sam? No. No? You, Laura? No, I was. I really want to learn, but yeah. sadly, my left hip is the one that I should be popping up on, and my hip doesn't pop. You know, it, it's, or it might it's, pop. Well, yeah, it, it'll pop out, but it won't pop up the way that it's meant to. Could you lie down on the board and do it that way? Yeah, that I, I could. Though, that would, would be body yeah, that's surfing. Yeah, body boarding. <laughs> 
take a devil into you can that. Take a, you, can, you can take a girl out of Essex, Laura, but you can't take the Essex out of the girl. Anyway, I've got a very funny story, and, I, and it is so on point for this person um, that I am going to tell it. Uh, hopefully I'm not going to tell it over too many points. Right, Andy Murray has just told me a great story about cosmetics on rackets. Thomas Bischoff from Head was trying to get Andy to change his cosmetics on his racket back in 2006 and 2007. Of course, he was working with Brad Gilbert back then. Um, and Andy told him that the cosmetic was different from the, uh, his original racket. And Thomas said, no, we've run tests on it, we've run diagnostics on it, and there's absolutely no difference whatsoever between the new racket and your old one. I'll pause. So committed was Thomas that he flew over to San Francisco, to Brad's house. He brought about eight to ten rackets, all painted black, and one of them had Andy's cosmetic underneath the black painted rackets. The others had all the new cosmetic. After about 10 minutes, Andy got rid of half of them. Beautiful overhead. Good courage from Zachary there. I tell you what, that's not easy with the amount no, of furniture on the ceiling to spot that. That's a good sign. Do continue, Mark. I'm fascinated. Bated breath down here. Yep. I can hardly probably breathe. I'm so excited. I'm just going to leave you wanting more. direction for that very oh, flat hit over the lower part of the court and that skip through to uh, Fernandez very short backswing isn't it again because of the heaviness of that head in the racket she's able to generate so much pace with almost a, just a jab at the ball the top hole in the previous one, a hole to love. And I will circle back to that story. So after 10 minutes, half of those rackets have gone. Uh, Thomas is not doing well at this particular point. And he then decides to hit a few volleys. He was down to a couple. And then he finally turns to Thomas and said, all right, Thomas, this is my racket. At which point, the man from head pulls out a coin, starts scratching the black paint off the head racket, and underneath was... And his racket. And his racket. Todd, you, Todd, I mean, Todd's the man. He's always right. And the paint jobs change it. It's not just Todd that's right. And he's yeah. right as well. That is a scalpel in his hand. And he can tell the difference. But it does go to show just how sensitive these great players are to anything. That's a great Lovely story, game. by the way. The bench is, is looking a little dry over there. But where is everyone? There's three of them. Oh. Is, is, is that a drink? Yeah, they're all they're filing in now. Have they heard you, Laura? Isn't that a drink? Or is that? Am I just showing my age? Canada Dry. It is, That's yeah. like a soda water, isn't yes, it? Yes, isn't that a, like a ginger? I think it's something, isn't it? It's a ginger ale. Yeah. I should know, I'm teetotal. I think one of the other problems with the serve, apart from the technique that both of you have uh, perfectly highlighted, is actually the grip again. I think to swing very hard at the ball for Layla, barely holding the racket in the way that she is just to try and hold on to it, doesn't help her. 
Well, as a lefty, you almost want to be as relaxed yeah. as possible as you're coming through and trying to hit the swinger out wide on the outside. It's a really well-placed serve, but it just doesn't have the same pop on it that you'd see, you know, someone like Kvitova, the way that it moves off the court with speed. This just kind of sits there for a bit. And it was a bit of a serve and survey, wasn't it? It wasn't a straight-up serve and volley. And she was at the mercy of Zachary at the net. Couple of break points. Yeah. She just isn't able to get any snap, is she, down. And also, I don't know what you can see, Laura, but to me, I just feel like her ball toss gets very straight up and sometimes even behind her. So she doesn't even get any, any weight into it. There's not, not a lot of her, but it would all help. Yeah, in, in mixed doubles the other day, it was actually going the other way. It was getting too far in front, and then she was kind of chasing it and was only able to hit the slice serve, really, because it was way too far off to the left. So there's a bit of everything going on. feel as though if she can just get into that pattern of play often enough and just keep hitting that same shot it's uh, a repeatable outcome every time doesn't need to be as expansive as sometimes she is Zachary got the success that she was yearning for. Four, three. She's got such a good attitude, doesn't she? Yeah. I don't know how you guys, you both feel. I just feel she's such an intelligent player. She brings her brains out of the locker room on onto the court. Let's have a listen. You keep it linear, so it's pretty solid up there. To get it up a little bit higher, just mixing up the, the paces, I think it's going to be a little bit better. She's frustrated right now on the forehand side, so take a look for that too. Great job. 
I also find her enormously articulate that whenever she's interviewed or how she thinks about the game. I'm afraid, I don't remember, she's 21. I'm sorry, I, she was a teenager when she had that incredible run. Yeah, I mean, but I, but I looked at her progression. She won Roland Garros Girls at 15. She broke the top 100 just after her 17th birthday. And she was 13 on, in the world at 19 years of age. I mean, that is a real, that's a, that's a super fast track. Yes, she's back a little bit from that, but she's still, she's you know, on the verge of top 30 again, rebounding after Time. you know a life-changing couple of weeks. And and she's only 21. Yeah, she's going to be playing in stadiums like this for a long, long time. It's Leila Fernandez, and it is a full house here at the Ken Rosewell Arena. The Greeks have certainly packed in tonight. Smattering of Canadians, and so far, it is Fernandez who have given them the biggest cheer so far. Just with the lead, marginally on serve. Two problems for Fernandez at times on the return, I think. She doesn't like to back up. She's not going to change her position much. It's OK when things are good, but she's missed quite a few returns tonight. But also, if you don't get it perfect, you're actually on the defense when you're that aggressive inside the baseline. You're actually hustling for your plus four shot. talking to Layla there about trying to get the ball up higher to Maria to actually change height at times you need to retreat to give yourself more court to work with to be able to get the flight over the net from Sacker. Fernandez doing a very good job of taking time away from the Greek out here in this particular point. We used the word hustle a little while ago about Fernandez. That for me is uh, what she's all about out there. serve the majority of the time on the ad here. Where does Zachary go? Oh, she has glued that to the line and she is stuck to the task. is not an easy stroke to produce a winner off. Fernandez saving break Time points in her morning. previous Increase. service game. Zachary now staring down the barrel of the gun. Time violation. I mean, I thought that was tough because it was pretty loud in here right up until she was bouncing the ball, so it's not like she wasn't ready to start the motion, but judgment call. Cheers. Do 
two break points, two first serves from Zachary. Team Greece. Brilliant serving. Game. Team Greece. Four games all. I always feel it's a great barometer of your confidence at how you go about saving break points. I think for second singles match of the year, that's a really good litmus test for Zachary in a, in a difficult match up here. So they didn't get a sighting on court of Felix. A knee problem for the Canadian. It's not been an easy 12 months for him from a health and body point of view. feels like she's overthinking that shot it, it's so much power going into it but then it's stiffening up and, and you can see the effort in her arm but it almost goes the opposite way to what she wants and then looks over at Tom Hill like oh what happened First really loose shot we've seen from Fernandez tonight. Pressure points are those are break points and points that lead to a break point. You can see how tight it's been tonight, but Fernandez uh, edging it in the big moments.
just rinse and repeat. You yes. want to just squeeze the singles line on the court, condense the court for Maria, and just try and make it more narrow so she doesn't keep missing it wide. And it's hard to see how Fernandez is going to get through her, hit enough winners. points in a lot of different ways doesn't she Fernandez and that's another one of those pressure points uh, racking up the total tonight Inside the lines, comfortably crossing the net at a good height. Easy winners. followed by the four-hand line, the pattern of play that she really enjoys. Jubilation for oh, Leila. Team Canada. Canada hanging on, 5-4. Canada lead 5-4. Obsessed with that reaction from her. There's 19... Um, maybe even more than 90% Greek fans in here. And she's like, come and let me have it then. You could just tell she's played a lot of Billie Jean King Cup matches. It's just the same energy. She's reveling in it. Too many changes from uh, later on this due side. She is, uh, as a, a lefty, is hugging the baseline, cutting the uh, angle off on this due side. Inside, 
the baseline a lot of time compared to the ad where she's dropping deeper. I just wonder whether Maria, who's got a nice rhythm on serve at the moment, just to give her a slightly different look at the start of this game, may just throw off her rhythm, stand a little bit wider, deeper. But it is a familiar return position she's taken up. Love 15. It's a little bit more than 10 minutes, wasn't it? After we saw it go there, but the racket is on its way back. I would doubt that it's uh, necessarily going to get an outing at this stage of the opening set. Slow motion stringing. I feel like that return needs to be higher over the net. Zachary can just lean into that plus one shot without having to do too much or think about it. If she's playing it above the shoulder, then at least Layla can look for the inside out forehand. Fifteen thirteen. Steph playing singles for the first time. And getting a, a win, but I think more importantly for him, just physically uh, coming out of it and feeling good about himself. A few issues at the back end of the season last year and already at the start of 2024. Whipping the crowd up into a frenzy. 15, 14. And as much as it is overwhelmingly in support of Team Greece, they applaud her. Couple of set points. She'd like to have that one back, wouldn't she? 30, 40. Maria's got to be one of the fastest out there. Didn't need to be that quick, did she? <laughs> to get to that particular body.
Greece to Greece. probably see it clearer from up where you are but I like when Fernandez goes forehand line with the return because Saka is naturally expecting that forehand cross that you would normally go for in a pattern of play as a lefty Fernandez. One great weapon that she brings out here is that she's not as fast and explosive as Maria, but she's certainly quick and she's got great hands and she's she's certainly got the uh, the edge on improvisation uh, between the two. I think that's very clear. Palms are getting sweaty. Everyone's on their feet after each point. Felix and Steph look more nervous than just about anyone. I've got a feeling that the fans just behind you might, might topple over at one point. <laughs> so excited. Oh. I might want to take cover. hour they've become Leila Fernandez fans. They are in this. opening set four of those have come off the backhand side you don't need to give it away oh she's found a set and a stunned Zachary looks down at where the ball landed that's Fernando. Fernandez. Has guided one right onto the line. Advantage, Team Canada.
perfect flight on that ball. Can she land the opening set? Fernandez makes you work an opponent, but it makes them work hard mentally because she's setting you a lot of different problems, point in, point out. And one of her great assets is she's different. She doesn't play to patterns that you would expect. Also takes a lot of time away from opponents. Thank you. This is a brute of a service game, isn't it? Gives her another route out of this trouble. A service game server the springboard for her to turn around this opening set set points coming and going for Fernandez heavy over to the forehand where she she's going to struggle to defend she can slice off the backhand she can move it around but the forehand she's a lot more limited we know this yeah, that one coming through at a lovely height yeah. if you if you open up the court and, and give Fernandez angle you're going to get hurt out there
And look at Felix's reaction here. He's gone for the mentally strong head tap. Vigilant to tidy up with the forehand. Fonsina. Once again, we see a great strength of being able to redirect very quickly down the line. Ridiculous entertainment here at the Ken Rosal Arena. Team Canada six games to five. Some stunning points. Is there a case, Laura, here just to give Fernandez four hands? I mean, the backhand actually in the last five minutes or so has been absolutely exceptional. Yeah, it looks to me like she's actually hitting through the backhand a bit more, trying to flatten it out, especially when she's going line. And she's finding that corner. So all I would be doing coming out of the changeover is going heavy to her forehand with some height on it. If you give her pace, she's good at blocking it and, and she can find that forehand cross court angle quite well. But if she plays it above the shoulder, in general so far, she's just thrown it up. So um, yeah, it, it's whether you can take that on board and, and figure out, yeah, I'm just doing a couple of things. Not wrong because neither of them are playing badly at all. It's a great match, but just tactically a few changes could make a huge difference for Maria. Time. Here you go, Leila. Come on, let's go. Your time, your time. Thank you. Settle down, please. Thank you. That's a pretty standard kick serve for Zachary, but because Layla can't hit through the forehand as much as she can on the backhand side, it doesn't do enough. And then straight away, Zachary is all over the next ball. And I really felt on this ad side, she should be kicking it out wide all day.
49. Couldn't quite capitalise on what was one of her best returns from this side. Excellent depth. Space was there. Getting into tie break in fine fettle, aren't they? I think it matters the way you come out of the set into the breaker, both with love service holds. Wouldn't particularly like to pick an outcome. So you will get first to seven here. I think she's done very well to put behind her that set point where she had that volley that just needed a fraction more stick, and the set would have been hers. Stop. One zero. Team Greece. Next point, next point, let's go. You got this, you got this. Pushing on after the perfect star once again. That efficiency when you are that far inside the baseline on the return on the G side, you don't collect it and you don't get enough depth, you are a little exposed. No mistake with that volley. I didn't even see it coming in. That was so rapid, up, up to the net, close it down, beautiful hands. Yeah, that's the ultimate stealth move, isn't it? So many ways, I kind of love watching Maria win a point like that rather than the uh, the flashing winners. Dug in. And a miss from your opponent is as equal value as you hit in a winner. 4-1.
gap widens. Five, one, Team Greece. Sakari has played some really sensible, astute tennis, hasn't she, since saving all those set points. I mean, this is, this I find more impressive than some of the spectacular shots that she hits, because this is just tricky. She's having to work so hard mentally. She always wants to rip it. it it's hard for her to just stay in the point. Fernandez knows she should have put this opening set to bed. Forehand volley, open court. Didn't do enough. And against a player who resides in the world's top ten. You need to take your opportunities when they're presented. Sing one, team Greece. And Zachary now poised to take her fifth straight set against Fernandez. Leads their head to head 2 and 0. Taking end to a beautiful set of tennis. Game and first set. Team Greece, seven and six. And the great escape is complete. after an hour and 26 minutes, almost an hour and a half for the one set to go off, try and recover, reset, think about what has uh, just gone away from her at 5-4. The forehand volley was the most crucial of the shots in that opening set. Opportunity, Sam, on both sides in terms of break points. Yeah, I have to say, a really strong set of numbers from both of them, and you can't really criticise uh, not you know, their break point conversion rates because they were saved by some absolutely fabulous tennis. I tell you, we'd be lucky to, if we get a few more sets like that over the course of this Australian summer, we'll be really, really lucky. And just a little off the numbers, we talked about pressure points during the set. Uh, Fernandez was well ahead at one point, 17 to 14. It ended up Sakari 26 to Fernandez 23. She won the big moments, particularly saving those four set points. Uh, when uh, Fernandez was 5-4 to the good. That was a special game, and it might be a very important one for her Australian summer. There was a lot to like about Maria Sakkari in that opening set. I think she was uh, stretched in every department. Three 
teams, of course, know that uh, the most simple of the arithmetic for them is to win 3 and 0 to be able to get themselves through Group B. I'll let you figure out the group standings, Pet. Yeah. But the roof just came off in here because they showed Alex Dimonor winning the first set on the big screen in the stadium against Novak Djokovic. So. There's a, a lot going on tonight, and we'll try and keep track of... of I mean, I've been trying to work it out down here. I, I actually have no idea, uh, which, you know, I should probably be more informed than that, but it is so tough to figure out who's going to come out of this group. Yeah, it's, uh, it's not going to be easy. Last night, we were down to one game, not sets. We were down to one game uh, in terms of who was going to go through. Norway suddenly came back into it with the, uh, with the way that things ended between Netherlands and Croatia. Uh, right now, Greece are looking pretty good. Chile are out, so uh, Greece at the moment have got seven sets to and have lost four. One seven sets, lost four. And Canada have won four sets um, and lost six. So even though we could get to a situation in this particular tie, of course, that uh, potentially could be one apiece, and they were on countbacks as we were last night in terms of games. Um, at the moment, Greece looking pretty good. France the through, as you can see there, Germany second. Um, actually make Germany having 53%, so they're uh, they're a little bit ahead of Croatia on, on that one. It says, oh, that's the sets, yeah, so yeah, Germany will go percentage. through. Yeah, so Germany go through on games at the moment at 53%. So uh, that will be the tiebreaker in Sydney. So they're in pole position. while we continue to uh, run the slider all over the uh, calculations, which we will do, we'll uh, reflect on that wonderful set point. Zachary coming up with the goods, battled herself and her opponent, but delivered when it mattered most. Had to do an awful lot in that set but where she was uncomfortable and that's what makes it even more impressive that she came through in the end and Tom Hill celebrating like he's yep. on commission he does yes but and it will be fascinating you know Zachary clearly has an awful lot more power with that once with that set cushion behind him and that's what's always happened in their meetings she she could push on very quickly through the second long opening set long time since we've had a set that long yeah it's usually sort of murray-esque style length <laughs> opening sets yeah so uh, obviously canada have still got it in their hands they can still turn around this particular tie to go through won their opening match and uh, if uh, Fernandez can come back and uh, win this particular match and they could take the mixed doubles it's still very much in their hands it's been interesting with the fewer teams in smaller groups how much it has come down to game percentage I'm not sure any of us maybe even the players really appreciated that every every game really does count here much more so yeah, from chatting to a few of them over the last few days, they've had no clue going into the match how many games they are looking to win. You know, they're just playing the match. And yes, that's probably the best way to do it because you don't want to be thinking about numbers when you're out there. But when it comes down to it, it would be quite handy to know, hang on, if I win just one or two more games here, uh, then I'll keep my team in it. So, yeah, it's a bit of a balance, but... Um, I'm sure Norway were happy with the outcome last night. Could be a service, Laura, that you could offer. Hey, you I'd have to figure it out first, the which it helps, with the, they, they, they and then let them time. know before the match. Well, you still have to figure out your rates. Right we're going to do it for free. Right Let's go. Come on. Second set. a free lunch in this world. Team Greece to serve. Got to play this contest without... Uh, thinking about what was in the past. Fernandez, Zachary in charge. What is really good news uh, for Team Canada is that 
Felix Auger Aliassime has gone off to get ready for doubles. That will certainly be a fillip for them if they, if uh, Fernandez can mount the comeback. One of the features of a win in Hong Kong was the ability to come back from a set down. Hadn't been a great season up until that particular point for the Canadian. She had won just three matches and lost 22 when she'd gone down a set in uh, that year, but uh, won three on her way to the title, including in the final. I was looking at before this match is Fernandez against the, the top 10 in the world. And apart from a Fed Cup win over Belinda Bencic back in 2020, her first uh, top 10 wins came at that run at the US Open over Osaka, Svitolina and Sabalenka. And her last top that. 10 win since then, her first since then, came at the Billie Jean King Cup finals in Sevilla beating Von Drostova. So she had, has had well, well over two years without a top 10 win and only five in her career. I mean, five, I think a lot of us would love to have five top 10 wins, but it just shows you sort of where she, where she is against the very best and, and how well, actually, she's done this evening to match up to Zachary, who has been, uh, you know, sitting at the top table for, well, this is her, her fourth season as a top 10 player. It's a sweet little forehand down the line, and you can see that is what's happening out there. Fernandez trying to collect the ball on the rise, hugging that baseline, and Zachary more than happy to let that ball drop. Surprised that number's so low in comparison by with Zachary. Uh, maybe she she could take time away a little more from her opponents. I'm not surprised because that's the way Layla makes you play. I mean, if she kind of wins and loses matches on yeah. her terms because she, she doesn't like to defend from deep. Doesn't move great actually out oh, wide. Gee, gee. Doesn't get out of the corners very effectively. I think the ball back in behind Layla is a really good shot, and I'm not sure that maybe Maria's. It, exploited that enough tonight so no and also Maria does tend to return and go backwards a little bit off the first serve so she gets a little bit further behind the baseline They're just an example there of Maria just going back on the return of serve. Oh. 
40, 30. We haven't seen that shot enough from Sakari because time after time, Fernandez just doesn't want to hit that one. She's trying to take it on the rise still and open up the court and play it line, but she just doesn't have the space around the shot. Let's just take a little look at uh, Fernandez in terms of uh, her returning. It's um, fairly instructive. We know she likes to cut off the wide serve from uh, Sacri, so you can see how much she's hugging that uh, right of your picture there, the yellow set of balls. But look at the depth on the juice side. Look at that. Minus almost half a meter, whereas on the ad side, the depth over the uh, service line is getting uh, an extra almost two meters. So that is a huge difference. And obviously a lot less time on this juice side to be able to pick up this serve. Is there, is there not, Sam, when you look at that particular graphic, is there, is there not any benefit to back up occasionally on the juice side? You would suspect, just, just to also give the server a different look as well and she's been caught a few times hasn't she uh, uh, yourself and Laura have been saying she's been very aggressive off the return and if it's not been deep or hard enough and she's been completely exposed on the next shot I love the way Maria moves onto the ball there all her troubles were over in the first set <laughs> they weren't going to reappear so early in the second that's the great thing about Fernandez's attitude is yeah. she's lost that set and she's not done a thing differently it's so intense every point very positive I'll tell you what, it's been hard to convert a break point out here, and that's not because they've been played poorly, it's because the, the server defending it has performed so well. Tom won't be panicking, he'll know that the uh, stats. Maria was uh, almost flawless last year when she won the opening set, 30-3, and three, just the three times she came up short having taken the opener. Jamarcic in the semis of uh, Linz, Bianca Andreescu in Miami, and Marta Kustjuk at Wimbledon. Canada. 
Can Fernandez find her second break of the match? In the end, she's gifted it. But it was her reward for bouncing back after dropping in the opening set magnificently. The fact that it was the last game at the old balls helped Fernandez just slow the pace down slightly and it wasn't jumping off quite so much so she had you know an extra half a second on the forehand to work with but she's just opening it line almost almost every time unless she can really step in that's when she takes it cross court and tries to get the width but it's just so impressive how she's responded after not coming through that first set. and then on the face of one of the youngsters a little bit of the agony pure determination has ever hedged on the Canadian's face it's hard being a tennis fan yeah that's why the fans get invested isn't it uh, to, when it is this meaningful as it is tonight here in Sydney See what I've also really helped Layla with the, some of the results not quite going her way um, from that US Open final, which I thought took a lot of getting over. You were talking to Adil, uh, captain, about her profile. I mean, she was the female athlete of the year um, in 2021. That's huge. But also, I think the fact that she's she's put together some really good doubles performances, particularly with Taylor Townsend. Uh, she's very happy to get out there and play on both tours, almost week in, week out. It's been, it's been good for her. And now the singles form looks like it's coming. Someone's so accomplished at the net. I mean, I know she has some weird grips going on there, but her volleying's been yeah. horrible tonight. Yeah. What do you charge for volleying lessons, Laura? I would have let this one bounce. Zachary was nowhere near the ball. Let it bounce, play a forehand, put it away. It was actually harder to miss than to make. That, that lets the momentum back, doesn't it? It lets Zachary off the hook. That volley could be so expensive in the context of this set. Fernandez has just bounced out of a really tough opener. She should have been 30 love, pressure right on, and said she's going to have to battle away out of the service game. You know, underline the break. That's, That's well. 
I feel like Maria lets the ball come to her on a return. As many returns as she makes in general, I still feel as though she has the ability to move in and out of the court a little bit better on the diagonal. She's so lateral off a serve that's going at 133 Ks. By the time it gets her, it's just got very little to work with. Sometimes just standing on the return as well on a slight angle rather than being completely flat as you can see here helps you in that kind of regard. away from the court as she's going back in there. You, you can't tell me that serve coming in there deserves to move you away from the court. She'll be moving on to it. Okay. A little more pop on that one, though. Team Canada. May even been the fastest of the night from Fernandez. Team Canada lead three games for one. How good's the response after missing that easy volley? I think a lot of players would have stayed on that point for the next three or four. Absolutely none of that from Fernandez. Just got to keep herself in contention. There will be another opportunity before the end of this set if she can just stay the one break behind. Let's first off. Fourteen, fifteen. 
wasn't entirely for sure with the ball in the air that it was going to get introduced to the line. Once again, the augmented graphics here showing how this game is uh, a game of many, many small sprints. Please. from Zachary and she duly uh, wraps up that hole to serve and does keep herself very much in contention in this second set. Definitely uh, talking about trying to change up the flight of some of the shots. Maria was talking about the uh, the slow kind of cutting lefty serve that was dropping short. And if she's aware of it, she has got the ability, of course, to adjust that return position to try and uh, counter it. from down here that that lefty swinger especially on the outside is harming Sakari that much it seems like she's actually already dealing with it maybe just not doing enough with the return she is aware of it then that second serve was a perfect example of when she could actually move forward at least a step and, and try and take the second serve on the rise because that lefty swinger is coming into the body so it's not a hugely difficult return to make I should say, it's not difficult to make at the pace that Fernandez is hitting it. When she actually goes after it a bit more and adds an extra 10Ks, then it makes a difference. So good.
15-14. Yeah, that's hugely impressive hands from Zachary on the on the redrop. That's not a skill that she has often found particularly easy. Had to stop rather quickly then put the brakes on. Well, that was a perfect point. Just got herself a little bit too uh, aggressive minded with her court position. Ended up taking time away from herself. Sensational from Zachary. Game team Greece. Three games all. Wow, she played some good tennis in that game, didn't she? I mean, that she fully earned the break back. Just let it happen a little bit more. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Players are ready. Thank you. chant of Layla at the end of the game so I feel like they just want more tennis out here the atmosphere has been incredible Should I put that one away? Yeah, I think Maria's I'm going to give her a bit of credit for staying home there. Would have been easy to have galloped into where the space was. She doesn't look comfortable up at net, that's for sure. Uh, Fernandez in uh, finishing the point or also just trying to finesse it out of trouble. And that will be a that's hugely disappointing for the Canadian because she, she spoke, you know, after the cover match, saying that that's where she spent a lot of her energy and time in the off season, making the transition forward, and and particularly on her net play, trying to finish more points off at the net. Just shows you it's easy to practice, not quite so. <laughs> I mean, it's a lot harder to put it in play in in this kind and this kind of occasion yes, against a top ten opponent. She plays so much doubles as well, plays uh, pretty regularly with Taylor Townsend. They've had some amazing results, so she is comfortable at yep. net just today, maybe second-guessing herself. It's always different in singles, though, isn't it, falling to, to when you're playing doubles?
it'll be interesting to see if she still wants to keep pressing and going, and going forward whenever she possibly can. Even the fact that she's missed so much in the forecourt. She's won, what, barely 40% of the points in this set when she's come forward. Oh. Maria, perfect. Thirty, forty. Feature of the match, and one of the reasons it's been so compelling. The fluctuations, the many pivot points, and potentially another one here. Juice. Danger dispelled for the moment. the commitment to come forward after so many opportunities that she's had at net to commit to the backhand line she was ready to play a first volley there well done doing so well to pose the question for Fernandez once more. Juice. This kind of contest is gold, isn't it, in terms of uh, preparations going into Melbourne. What a way to get yourself match hardened right at the start of the season. of energy as she jogs to her chair. Team Greece lead four games to three. And she battles hard to keep Fernandez at bay in the seventh game of this second set, and she has done so. Potentially an opportunity for uh, some of these players to be able to get themselves out and about, go over to uh, Wally Masseur's uh, neck of the woods. It's in Sydney's north, it hosts millions of visitors every year. And of course, uh, the main way you're going to get out there, if you want to do a little bit of that surfing, is on the Manly Ferries. It is a very pleasant way to while away a little bit of time. Manly Corso and Manly Wharf, very popular amongst the locals as well as the visitors. 
Spend a bit of time out there, Sam? Oh, I have. I do like taking the ferry over, actually. Yeah, just take the ferry pretty. over. It's yeah, quite heavy. There's, yeah. a, there's a lovely little spot just along from Manly called Shelley Beach, where there's some great little cafes. It's about a 10-minute walk from the uh, ferry stop. Happy to do that. As long as I don't have to do any surfing, I'm fine. Yeah. Definitely not my forte. Anything aqua, to be honest. <laughs> Time. Struggle to drink it, let alone get in it. A oh, funny scuba diving story for you one day that you'll uh, oh, okay. you'll enjoy. Can hardly wait. Yeah, anticipation is unbearable. <laughs> First man ever to be in the water without a weight belt and still stay at the bottom of the ocean. Anyway, it's nice to see these. Uh, True story. Players are ready. Thank Kids you. are out here getting inspired about this wonderful sport. It's a long, hard journey, a lot of sacrifice, a lot of different locations, moving away from home as uh, Maria's done. But it does bring you success and at times untold riches. Brings you a bit of heartbreak as well. Love 15. Semi-finals at the US Open that year that Fernandez uh, lost in the final to Radicanu, but of course Zachary also semi-finalist at the French Open, having had match point. You just always get the sense with Fernandez when she comes up to the volley that she's always looking for, for placement and doesn't really always look to stick it. She'd rather sort of uh, caress the shot. And sometimes that gets her in trouble. You know, when you lay the racket head back, anything can happen sometimes. Thirteen fifteen. Can Zachary take this chance? Chance, if she does, that would leave her serving for the match. Too good, too strong. And, and there could be two wins on the board very soon for Team Greece today.
Team Grizzly, five games to three. It's an awful lot of firepower, isn't it, to try and soak up for, what, two and a quarter hours. been a frenzy of support for both players out here. It has had lovely fluctuations, undulations, never been quite sure which way it's going to go until now. She had to endure. But it is another straight sets win over Leila Fernandez for Maria Sakkari. It takes their career meetings to 3 and 0 for the Greek, and it also takes Team Greece to their first victory at this year's United Cup as a team. doubles to come but if my calculations are correct I feel as though that's good enough for Greece to go through because they've won four straight sets today even if Canada pick up the mixed doubles in straight sets they are still going to only have won six sets and lost seven and the worst that Greece can do is having won eight sets and lost six and it would also mean that Germany would go through as the best runner-up I am going to put your life on it, Sam. Uh, I, I would trust you with your calculations. Your maths are pretty good. I'll tell you what has been great. Uh, it's been a good night, hasn't it, for, for tennis, uh, and particularly women's tennis. Uh, Zachary, that gets you battle-hardened for the season ahead. I think she'll be very pleased to pull out that kind of performance uh, so early in the year. That that's first set, um, getting through that service game, saving, what, four or five set points? That is worth yeah. its weight in gold. And Laura Robson has made her way from the side to catch up with the victor, Maria Sakkari. Maria, congratulations. 
I'm a little bit nervous to say it because there's a lot of calculations been going on, but I believe you have just put Greece through to the quarterfinal on Friday night. How does that feel? Um, well, I believe so too. I don't want to rush things, but I think that we're through. Um, you know, it feels amazing to be playing here in Sydney in front of so many Greeks. Oh, it's unbelievable, like starting the season this way. Um, you know, I couldn't have asked for anything better. I believe, you know, myself and the team, we are just so grateful to be here. And it's such a tough match. You were a couple set points down in the first set, then a breakdown in the second. How were you able to stay calm and to turn that match around? Uh, I think the level was super high from both of us. Um, you know, uh, just, uh, I just told myself, told myself that I need to, yeah, you know, just make balls, uh, uh, play my game, don't focus on what happens on the other side of the court and just uh, think of myself. Uh, she was playing amazing and, you know, I'm very happy that I can, you know, get to play these matches uh, right on, on the start of the season. And I'm just, um, yeah, super happy that I performed this way today. And there are a couple stressful sounding conversations between you and your coach. Do you enjoy having him and the rest of the team there? Is it nice to have a sounding board? Or you, sometimes you must prefer a bit of silence. <laughs> um, you know, it's great to have, you know, obviously Tom, Petros and the rest of the team. Uh, we have a great chemistry and it's, it's, it's incredible, you know, to just experience something different because we're always, our, you know, by ourselves on the court. And it's just amazing to, you know, have their support. And, you know, sometimes heated conversations happen, but that's part of, uh, that's part of the tournament. And how about the mix? Will we see you back out here in, in half an hour or so? Um, we'll see. We have to make sure that, you know, we're through. Um, and, you know, I'll speak to Steph, I'll speak to the rest of the team and decide. Well done. Give it up for Maria Zachary. Now, the one thing that Maria never does is give up. And even last year, Sam, she was struggling, wasn't she? And then salvaged the entire season, going back to her one of her favorite countries in Mexico and winning in Guadalajara, where she had lost the previous year in the final to Jesse Pakula. Had she not gone there and defended those points and actually made more, could have been outside the world's top 20. Yeah, it could have been. I'd say they're pretty tropical out here this evening, wasn't it? Yep. Not quite at altitude, but uh, yeah, there's certain conditions that Maria does play very well. And she, for quite a softly spoken, quite introverted character, she actually does enjoy the big stage and certainly loved having all this home support. I have to say that was impressive for me. There were a few things that obviously need tidying up and discussing. But just in, in fact, in the, some of those really gritty service games, the way she served break point down, where she came up again, again, a very difficult opponent. Lefty found some strange angles, put her in comfortable, uncomfortable places in the court. And she did a lot of things right tonight. She can really build from that. Yeah, and that uh, some good numbers as well in terms of first. Uh, I would like to see Layla just have a little more flexibility uh, within her game in terms of moving around a bit. It feels as though when everything's working and it's uh, all on point, obviously we know how good she can be. Three titles to her name, the final at the US Open, but I think against these, these top players, and Maria is that, you've got to have a little bit more in your repertoire to throw them out of their rhythm in some of the moments that she has. I mean, she'll look at it and think, well, I created so many chances, I did a lot of things right, just couldn't capitalise, but the argument on the flip side is that is Maria knew what was coming and was able to counter that in the pressurised moments. Yeah, a little tidy up on the volleys as well yes. uh, before heading into Melbourne. But again, I have to say that the level, some of the level from the opening set, uh, if Fernandez isn't seeded for the Australian Open, which might happen, no one's going to want to see her floating about in their part of the draw. No, Maria Sakkari signing a name and uh, signing Team Greece through to the quarterfinals. We'll be back for the mixed.